Um, wow. The all living things have to obey the same laws of physics, and they change in their influence. No, they don't change. They don't change. They're invariant. That's not what I wanted to say. All living things have to obey the same laws of physics. The laws of physics are universal, but the relative importance of those laws changes depending on your size. So if on planet Earth you're a big animal, then the dominant force that you have to deal with is gravity. Whereas if you're a very tiny animal, then gravity doesn't really play an important role in your life, so your, your body shape can be different. The way you're constructed doesn't have to take account of the gravitational forces. It has to take account of other forces, like viscous forces, if you're moving through air, or particularly if you're moving through the ocean. So the specific forces of nature, the specific properties of the universe that bother you and inform your function and your shape and your... I was going to say design, but I'm not going to say design, but you know what I mean. Yeah, anyway, there we go. There's quite a lot there. <laughs>
to me, there's one experience here in Australia that really has given me a window into, into the excitement of biology. I mean, intellectually, it's fascinating, but the, the real, that, that key, the, 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 the switch that turns you on to a science in the way that looking at stars turned me on to astronomy, uh, I've seen it, and it bizarrely, and I think quite commonly amongst biologists, is with beetles. I mean, there are, there's such a diversity of absolutely bizarre beetles in this country, and I know in many other countries in the world, but this is the first place that I've looked at them and seen them laid out and interacted with them, and they are ridiculous in many ways. And to think that all those beetles emerged through the process of evolution by natural selection, each one of them has evolved to fit a particular niche that's available in the environment, their, their, their structures and forms and functions and colours are not only adapted to the environment, their sexual selection, all sorts of complexities, but you see this vast explosion of different forms of life, all of which uh, survive and prosper and are suited to living in this landscape. So I think that's it really. I've seen the I've seen the way into biology, and it is beetles. If you think, I mean, I must say, I must say, it, they are the, all you need to understand Darwin and to understand evolution and why and, and why the diversity of life that you see on Earth today, um, how it could have emerged from from the simple origins of life over three and a half billion years ago on this planet. All you need to do is look at the beetles. There is no other reason why you would get such a diversity of different forms of the same insect than evolution by natural selection, by sexual selection, and this drive in complexity because there are so many niches available in the environment. In other words, if you don't believe in Darwin, you are a What I've also come to realise is that life is an emergent phenomenon. I'll just say it. See, life is an emergent phenomena, by which I mean that it's a structure that is allowed by the laws of physics in the same way that a star or a planet or an asteroid or a galaxy is a structure that's allowed by the laws of physics. But I think what life shows you is that there is a tremendous range of possible solutions possible possible ways of sticking very simple particles, actually three subatomic particles together, up quarks, down quarks and electrons. You take those, you can build them in possible ways. And what life shows you, what a study of biology shows you, is that there is a practically infinite number of fascinating ways of sticking those particles together, consistent with the laws of nature um, and consistent with laws of thermodynamics and consistent with every little bit of basic physics that you learn. Just look at the beetles. How many possible solutions are there to building something with six legs and a couple of eyes and a head? A lot. Over a million at least on the planet at the moment. Probably more than that.